So I can see them coming. They're almost here. So maybe I'll talk a little bit about uh, what I'm going to use. I showed you some pictures. Uh, well, I posted some pictures from my sketchbook. Uh, I do this a lot uh, when I'm working on location. Uh, I'll use this brown, it's called Kraft, it's a printmaking paper called Stonehenge. Comes in a, comes in white, gray, a kind of a lighter tan like that, which is also a nice base. Um, there are other colors like a pale blue, which, yeah, I see them. I'm just gonna uh, do a little preliminary here. Um, this is Bockingford. It's a watercolor paper which comes in white, but comes in a pale blue, pale green, and a buff color. Also very nice to work on. Um, <clears throat> the reason I like it is because uh, I don't have to think through uh, the washes uh, and plan things. If I see something and I don't have much time, Come on in, guys. So I was just letting folks know that they're... Thank you for having us, John. Oh, no problem. Thank you so much. Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. And we'll be... You're going to sit on a chair? Yeah, Yeah, come on in, grab a chair. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Who are you? Wendy. Hi, Regina. Nice to meet you, too. So... The show was amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank you. How'd you go on the road? Yeah. I'm just the art okay. I like your, uh, your well, subject matter a lot. Okay, okay so our, our group is here. Um, I know, there, there are, there's chairs and there's stools. John? Yep. So probably most of you guys most of you guys who are watching know most of the folks who are here. So Okay. So uh, today what I'm gonna do Hi John. <laughs> Hi there. Hello John, this is exciting. What I, I discussed, what I'm going to do today is a kind of a pseudo gouache kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to use a toned paper rather than a white surface. So here's a couple small examples. Let's see if we can see them without glare. I'm doing a Facebook Live. Uh, it's on that brown kind of paper. And it's very, very nice for have this warm brownish color mm. as an underneath to work on for your, if there's a lot of cool blues and things like that. It's not, it's a little different if you're using a warm colored uh, subject. So in this instance, a lot of the browns that are showing through here actually are the paper and then there's other things on it. So what I do is I find that the normal uh, watercolors, the dark colors are good enough to cover that. Um, what you, if this is as dark as the paper is, then anything that's going to be lighter than that in the image you're gonna to have to mix some white with the color. So in this instance, you would be mixing a little less than you would here. And the paint you're going to be using is going to be a denser consistency than you would normally uh, use, but you still, there's some washes involved. So you can also do it on a white paper what you would do is you would just do a beaded wash and you don't have to do it well in this case. 
You just cover it with the color you want, usually a light medium value. You could even sort of underpaint warm in one color, you know, brownish colors or cool colors. So under for this subject, for example, you might underpaint that with a warm brownish color and then you might underpaint the warmer colors with something cool just to let a little bit of it show through. So here's what I'm gonna work on here. I'm gonna use this brown paper and the drawing of it, as you can see, it's another one of my cousin Dennis's uh, West Coast Sojourn. This is from Monterey. Mm -hmm. um, there's a ton <laughs> of uh, stuff in there. Uh, there's good great birdhouses, wires, lights, fish, who knows what. But how much is necessary? What's really necessary? Um, well, let's, yeah, before I, yeah, I, I'll tell you why I chose this. Blue and yellow. It's for Ukraine. So um, here is the same sort of thing done by Thomas Moran when he, uh, these are little studies that he did uh, in gouache and watercolor on a toned paper. Um, oh, that, those, there's the ones that I posted. Same thing. It's a great study medium outside. Um, it's also very much like the very the earlier English watercolor painters, the ones that look almost like oil paintings, uh, because they use their paint in a little denser consistency like I will be doing. So what I'm gonna do, the usual deal, I'm gonna find that horizontal, key horizontal, which doggone is almost in the middle here. Uh, maybe I'll take it a little higher. Key vertical, I'm gonna split it there. Another key, uh, top of that roof. We've got an angle here. I'm looking for the very, very big shapes. There's a second set of, uh, well, let's stop that there. But this is great because I don't have to think, okay, first I'll do this wash, then I'll do that wash, and then, or, oh, no, wait, maybe I should. <laughs> I can just dive right in and have that. Ah, here's our sign. I'm going to start with a rectangle and then chop it into what I want. Diagonal there, compare it. Watch when you're doing things like this, lay two pencils so you can see that this one is a little more steeply angled than that one. Yeah. It's gonna obey that uh, perspective thing. Okay, bring the side of this building down because there is a significant eave there. So I can stop that short windows. And this is good because the lights will cover the darks and you can get away with not getting it quite right the first time. <laughs> but all that stuff in there, I figured my cousin and his wife don't remember any of that junk. What they remember was the bright, brilliant blue light. Hi, Cindy. Um, you didn't say hi to me yet. Well, okay, we got Jane. We've got Jane Curl, Jackie Brown, Leslie Leavenworth. Christine Slappy Lolly. Okay, Christine Slappy Lolly. Chuck Murtis. Chuck Murtis. Dwight, Dwight James, Jean. Jean, Mary Johnson, Mary Johnson, and Gary, Gary Hoff. So we got a great group of artists here, which just makes me all the more nervous. <laughs> <laughs> that is so okay. silly. I understand. Uh, okay, there, there's that pole. Here, here, because of you. Something like this pole. You might want to move that pole around. I like this mast thing. 
Hello, Catherine. So, Catherine, I will introduce you to the group in just a bit. So we got our peer here, which is fundamentally just going to be a bunch of darks. Would you like another chair? Come right here. Good, good. I can, I can even go back there too. We're just kind of in the closet. There you go. If you need us to move out of your way. Oh heavens, no. <laughs> this is Catherine Lair. She's our from New Regular. Regular. Yep. <laughs> from New London and a plein air painter extraordinaire. Hi, G oh yeah, Jeff. Oh, I, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's good. She's, she's modest. She's no. modest. No, I, I'm always happy when I get my equipment set up. <laughs> Everyone else is painting away, and I'm like, how does this work again? Welcome to all my world. <laughs> well, what he doesn't know is I'm here to, to steal his design ideas of how to Facebook Live really well, because I had no idea. Look at his setup. Oh, I know. It's like, whoa. He's perfected. Oh, no. I, I, boy, you, I, there's people I see doing it. And it's, it's like, looks like, uh, <laughs> looks like NASA when they were ground control center <laughs> at Houston. <laughs> hey, they were successful. Yeah. They were, they... I was wondering what kind of table easel you had, too. So, this is my normal uh, outdoor easel. I just oh. pop the legs out a little oh. further. So I'm checking oh, but my he sizes. He's a hardware junkie. Yeah. Or he he creates. Yeah, I mean, I'm a yeah kind of a tripod hoarder. <laughs> well, yeah, look at it all. So. That's what I mean. It's pretty complicated. I it think. is. But well, I'm always trying to often. simplify. So, <laughs> hills of whatever's on the other side of Monterey Bay. There, I'm gonna maybe put some marks for where I want boats, but I probably shouldn't even do that. It's, I'm looking for, right now, I'm looking for squinting like crazy, seeing a dark shape like that. I'm glad you told that truth. You're squinting like crazy. Yep, it's, squinting is, is the absolute most important skill in, in painting, particularly if you're painting plein air. Does that like almost exactly like when I take my glasses off and I paint everything? That, that it's, no, it is a little different. It is a little different. And squinting is you close one eye all together mm -hmm. and you then begin closing the other eye until you're basically seeing dark and light. Mm -hmm. um, when you take your glass, that's, this helps us see the value structure. And that's, which is very important. And you're looking for like three value structure shapes. Yes. Um, about to go into that too. Thank you. Um, I'm looking at the sky and the, the, we have the three planes that I always talk about. The sky, the surface of the earth, and then the stuff sticking vertically out of it. One will be the dark plane, one will be the medium, one will be the light. And the key one is the medium because usually the medium will not be 50-50. It'll be somewhere closer to the lighter one or closer to the darker one. In this instance, the sky and the uh, water are very, very close. I'm going to give the water a slight edge. I'm seeing it as a bit darker, particularly down here. I'm going to give it a slight edge and maybe... And it, Yes, there are light objects stuck in here, the boats, the signage, the side of the building, that kind of thing. But basically, as you can see from the side of the building and the pier, the stuff sticking up is, in this instance, the dark plane. So here we go. So what you do, I, I, I hope I explained it a moment ago. Um, since the paper is this value, anything that's lighter than that will require me to mix some white uh, into, here's what I'm using, uh, titanium white gouache. I'll be mixing that into my colors. And 
since we'll be using a denser consistency of paint, uh, you'll need to use slightly stiffer brushes, like maybe nylons, um, the very soft things like the squirrel probably are not going to be as helpful in this instance. So I am going to hit I usually go for my lighter colors first. So I'm going to get some yellow. I can't remember which yellow this is. It could be Hansa, it could be Cad, it could be Aureolan, and I'm going to put some white in it, and maybe a little bit of orange. Whoops. Okay. A couple of, uh, I want a couple of um, jars of water, because your water will get dirty in this instance. And these light things will go, I'm going to, the all that other stuff. And this is just watercolor mixed with white gouache? Yep. Because I find that the darks are plenty dark enough to, to cover this, this sort of paper. Um, Why don't you just use a lot of water in your paint to get the light color? Because it will then be somewhat more transparent Got it. and this brown will show through and then it will look like a brownish tan as opposed to a, a yellow like that. Mm -hmm. So you can see this is going to be very, very general. Mm -hmm. And the weight of this paper is this printmaking paper. It's about like a 90 pound watercolor paper. Is this it, John? Yes. Can I pass it around? Sure. Um, it's uh, called, again, Stonehenge uh, printmaking paper. Mm -hmm. It's all cotton. Um, it's about, yeah, 90 pounds. And it's surprisingly dimensionally stable. Um, meaning it doesn't buckle a lot. So here I'm getting some cerulean or cobalt. <laughs> And I'm getting some white. Oh, maybe a little bit more. And I'm getting it to a very slow moving creamy consistency. I'm going to whoop in here and get this. It's, it's really almost more like oil painting in a sense. Hmm, because it's thick. It's thicker, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put a wee bit of this yellow into it and a little more white as I come down here. Now, if I, if I could convey the consistency of it, it's kind of... Uh, I guess it's, I haven't used acrylics that much, but the last time I used them, which was many, many years ago, it's about the consistency of that. So. Why did you laugh? What was that? Well, because they. He's not telling us. <laughs> well, the, back then acrylics were just acrylics. Now they've got all these oh. modifiers, retarders. Uh, so notice I'm going a little bit lighter here at the horizon. And you'll also notice that it dries a bit darker than what you put down, which is typical of, of gouache or typical of uh, acrylic. No, acrylic usually dries darker, doesn't it? But <laughs> my first attempt at using acrylics, by the time I got the color mixed that I wanted, it, it had turned to bubble gum. Wow. <laughs> and or something about that consistency. So it was very frustrating. So you can see I can work into it to, to get a blend. I can put a little more blue in there. And again, if I want something else darker on top of that, I can make it happen later. Or something lighter, I can make it happen later. 
So this would dry real fast, just like that. It will tend to dry a little faster than watercolor will, mm. which if you're working on a watercolor paper. Hi, Carlos. Um, hi, Anne. Gosh. And that's how you say our names. You see us on the, you yeah, see us on the screen. Yeah, the monitor, yeah. Um, just, <laughs> like Miss Nancy in Romper Room with the magic mirror, you know. So That's why I always don't want to say anything. <laughs> I'll just watch. Okay, so I'm going to go to, I'm going to mix a little bit more blue in, uh, this time some ultramarine, bit of white. And I'm going to, Again, I will modify that probably later. And I'm gonna get a little bit more blue into it as I come down. And probably you're gonna see a lot of glariness. Um, the other thing about this is it's, it's almost like a, similar to a hot press surface. Uh, putting a little bit of red in it. Get that wobbly edge there. So I'm getting a little darker and a little redder as I come down. Alaska! I could probably, let's see, put a little... <laughs> My burnt sienna today is uh, it's a cocktail of transparent iron oxide, actual burnt sienna, and Daniel Smith quinacridone sienna. Whoa. So, <laughs> Running out? Were you? I, I could follow until you got to the last one. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is he speaking another language there? I'm gonna make a little. I'm also gonna use this color. I might put some lighter stuff on that. I am going to. I already love the landscape back there. This area, which is in shadow, I'm gonna paint it in in one sort of massive block, and then, oh, I should have. Now I just look at this. I should have brought some yellow a little further down here. And put a, maybe a little yellow ochre in it too. Oh, the one beam. Of that thing coming down mm -hmm. there. Again, like I say, the lovely thing about this is it's rewettable and it's malleable. Oh, that's good. And you can play with it a bit. It always felt to me like gouache handled a lot like oil paint. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah if, you're, if you're using it densely, that's, that's quite true. So since I want to go quite dark here anyway, I'll go with my dark blue, which is Prussian. Same palette that I normally work with, Hi, just Judy. adding white. Hi, Judy. <laughs> Judy Smithson, wow. Okay, we got Burlington, we got Des Moines, we got... Did you see Carlos was in uh, Alaska? Whoa! Wow. Hey, Carlos! Good go. It's a long way from West yeah. Liberty. So. From Iowa. Iowa. <laughs> that is a good expression. That was a southern accent in yeah. Iowa. Iowa. <laughs> so maybe a little more red, a little more sienna in there. Can. And here, I'm, there was no white mixed into this. This is just the normal watercolors. But again, a, a kind of a slow, well, you can see it. It's not moving on the palette. Yeah. Uh, dense consistency there. Do you use this very much or is this a... Primarily as a sketch. Uh, uh, kind, uh, yeah, these are, these are ones that I did. These Burlington there. Um, the el the elevator in Illinois there across the river. Um, here I was up in Mosquito Park getting a more elevated view. With this same paint? 
Same paint, yeah. So you can see the color of the paper here showing through a bit. It's the same paper I'm using here. And so let's get into some bluish black down here. You can just be, you know, really whoop in there. Whoop in. Hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. The whole gang's here. Oh, I was trying to move up there. I know I at your spot that you usually, <laughs> if you want it, I can move. You can kick um, any of us out. We're all we're all visitors. Oh. <laughs> now up here. It's great to have visitors. I'm gonna put a little white in that mix I just had. John, do you know how many times I've watched and saw you had people on the sides of your picture here? Mm -hmm. See, so just yeah, read, and I could see them moving on the side, and I watched not your art presentation, but to see who was in their studio ah. with you. <laughs> <laughs> we try to be really quiet. It's like right in here, you can see them. Or something. That's usually where I am. <laughs> yep. Okay. So this, I put a little of that yellow into this to greener color to get the side of this. Uh. So there's not much of a value change between here and here. Um, and I am going to make a kind of lavender, dark lavender for all this. And I'll paint that in the whole thing. And these lighter spots where the building is showing through. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> um, I will paint over with white, thick white. So let's make that bluer. A little bit of white, a little bit of red. A little bit of lavender. Gosh, I got some lavender here. Make it redder. Can already bring down some of the uh, uprights from the railing there. A what? How come the writing doesn't go away? Totally the writing. Like, oh. oh. It just stays there? Yeah. Oh, Until someone cool. else puts one in there. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay, let's execute. Oh, I see other places I should have put some yellow. <laughs> well, that'll teach me. I would think you could still do that. With yeah. Well, I, I, I almost need this for a... Uh, To know where I'm at. Yeah, I need a lot more than that to know where I'm at. So, <laughs> but I can understand. That's that. that you know, knowing where you're at is, is one of the helpful. most important things in life. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, where the heck am I? How did I get here? Yeah. What does it all mean? Yeah. Well, so, that's a tough question. <laughs> so. Yeah, but if you're painting. You're probably not causing anybody much trouble. Right. So <laughs> I'm going to take some of that blue and I'm going to modify that bit back there. Okay. So you can adjust your values and stuff. I'm going to put a little bit of wobble in that line so it indicates it's land and not. Mm -hmm. um, now. A uh, stiffer, smaller brush. Again, I hope I did mention that the stiffer brush is, is the sort of thing you want to use on this. So, you a, did. You said acrylic, line, acrylic you said brush. Um, let's get a dark. Eileen, she's in Florida. From Sarasota? Yeah. Oh, 
Mm. Hey, Eileen. What's the temperature? <laughs> um, Warmer than here. I know this one. Although it's really nice out. Not yeah. swimming weather, but not swimsuit weather. Nice. No. Eileen, the, one of the reasons I've not, not been doing many pastels <laughs> lately <laughs> is because I, I have a dry skin issue and, and oh. my, my hands crack. And the dry powder just makes it worse. And uh, that's interesting you say that because every time I pastel, I have my lotion with me. And I always, I, I mean, I literally can get all set up for pastel and I'll go get the lotion and come back to my work. That's cool. So I've been thinking about fire. Should I close the door? Just kidding. I've been thinking about doing some royal pastels rather than I was thinking regular pastels because no I'm closing the doors. I think let's get out. <laughs> what about wearing really thin gloves? I I just can't. I don't like the feel of gloves. That's the problem. Oh, I was I wondered. It's uh. I mean, like the surgeons. Yeah, the the little the, the little latex thin ones. They they just drive me nuts. Yeah. Fairfield? Have you tried the finger cops? Huh? Yeah, and that that's almost the same, same thing. thing. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm... Uh, <laughs> Wrapped up. Uh, yeah. Well, you are, right? Uh, so hopefully you can see it's starting to become the thing that it is. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> But I want to emphasize you really do have quite a bit of uh, leeway to change things and, and bring them back to adjust. More so than watercolor? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You yeah. can't go back like that. <laughs> yeah. no. Well, I can't. Well, um, maybe someone no, can. I'm intimidated by watercolor. So. So it just seems like... It leaves a blob. It, uh, another thing, you know, apropos of that, is, is it lets me, with a water media, attack. Oh, she's got the same problem. Yeah, uh, see, then we don't have all the dust either, too. Oh, and that, that's, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. that's a secondary issue with that. And just, you know, having to clean your room <laughs> that wow. you've been working in, right? So, yeah, we might do that. Uh, we might do that. I haven't been following that conversation. Okay. It's a pastel conversation. Yeah, I, Eileen is a is a very very good pastelist. Oh, I met her. And uh, and she's got a cleaning lady. She says. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna, for starters, I'm gonna put that sign in, in a very pale 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 blue. So you can see this is is. Uh, it's all yeah it's like acrylic really what brand John? Uh, it's my regular watercolors and the only thing I've done is I've mixed in this white gouache okay. so it's to go outside the only thing I'm adding to my kit is that wow. one thing so you know and maybe some you know diff slightly different brushes which usually I've got Bunches on hand, anyway. Now, would you sometimes, John, would you sometimes do watercolor like in your sky and possibly the water and still utilize the gouache? You could do in that. Some portions of yeah, the you could do that. As, as I was mentioning, if you had a white sheet and you wanted to tone it, mm -hmm. you might tone just the portions you're going to mm -hmm. paint like this. Um, mm -hmm. But generally, I find. If the medium is is pretty much uniform throughout the picture, it looks good. So I miss my hearing aids. Miss your um, hair dryer. They do. Yeah, because you usually say, "Hold on, and right?" Yeah. I have to. See, that's I the like the that's medium. the mm -hmm. dries without having to. 
I saw it sitting there on the table, and I thought, you don't know how many times listening to his video I have to mute him when he puts yep. the hearing aids in the He the always warns. Air dryer dog. just don't really work. <laughs> It's uh, that those fancy setups where the people can uh, mute the sound or switch from one image to another and switch to a picture of their palette and that kind of thing. You always do say, hold on, here goes the... Yep. So let's see, let's have a turquoise dark blue in here or something. Ooh, you put a wave on there. Yeah, it makes us want to go in there, doesn't it? How so, it and then the ultramarine cobalt. I guess this is a place you go to get on a boat and go out and watch whales in Monterey Bay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, boy, that sounds like a whole lot of fun. That makes yeah. you think of a houseboat in a way, doesn't it? Yeah. So, but like I say, I figure my cousin didn't, Think all this little member bulletin boards and junk and stuff, and they probably remember the smell of the air and the mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. bright water and you know all that good stuff like that. Were you thinking fishy smell? <laughs> oh, I love. Oh gosh. That's what I think. Oh, I like oh, seafood. Oh. Yeah. Have you painted much on hot press paper? Um, no, I, th this would be like it. Yeah. Um, it's very much a hot press surface. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we're getting down to our darks. Uh, I don't believe I got enough pitch on this as I should have. Note that the bottom pitch is one way and the top pitch is the other. Very important. Is that back skinny piece maybe a lighter yellow? The one that, that yeah, that one right there. Is that a lighter it's yellow? It's a it's a white. Well, doggone. Let's have a look. It's a sign, and it looks to be white to me. There's some. Oh, okay. It almost looks like a lighter yellow. Yeah. So. Let's see, there's a. Cast shadow here from the sign. And these are all things you can Ooh, that's fun. play with and uh, now is all the paint gouache or just the white wash? Just the white. Okay. Yeah, so like I say, it's my normal paint that I take out there. And uh the only thing it's I'm adding is that tube of white. So it keeps you a small kit, not a lot of junk, fast setup, fast takedown. Uh, I'm gonna get in here now and squint, just squint like crazy till you see a shape. Uh, it's uh, Prussian, basically other things that I've been using. Uh -huh. um, Is it Prussian, Prussian blue and raw umber? Well, I, I don't have any raw umber, but I do have a cocktail of burnt siennas or burnt sienna-ish colors. Because I never use black, I just do Prussian blue. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll go plenty, plenty black. Uh, Mm. I don't know even why I buy, buy black paint. I never use it, ever. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, some. there's some very interesting mixes you can make, um, particularly if it's like neutral tint type black. Are you, are you talking about the Zorn palette where you're using uh, uh, yellow yeah. ochre, white? And the uh, vermilion, yeah. Red. Um, 
red and black. Try mixing your black with a bright yellow, like your cad or your whatever your lemony yellow is, and you get a range of lovely natural olive greens. Quick, you know. Oh, yeah. Yes. And the other thing is to mix it with your reds, yeah, like the cad red or the tomato red, mm -hmm. and your alizarin, and you get these smoky deep purples like an eggplant. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, really, really... Uh, uh, Yummy. They are. They're just <laughs> gorgeous colors. What was that, black or white? Either a yellow or a red, a bright yellow or a bright red. Mm -hmm. And it'll give you... Uh, Deep earthy purples, uh -huh. like eggplant or. Uh, now, are you talking about a cool red, like a, um, like a. A lizard. Rose or a black yeah. Rose yeah. Or, both of those. Uh, also, or are also you with. About more like a cad. Both. Cad red. Mm, okay. Well, either one. They'll each be a little bit different. Okay. And they're Can they're. These around, John? Oh, certainly you may. Yeah. So, cool. so I am gonna put a little more blue in the bit up here. Again, this is dense, dense uh, paint. Can I ask a framing question? Sure. So in this frame, you have done something that I always like to do, which is it doesn't just cap off the picture. You literally let the frame, the matting, inside the matting, you let the paper be seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, which I love that because it gives a realistic, you know. Well, the problem, yeah, actually, it's it's not as, as thought through as you might thought, think. <laughs> I love it. So, um... The the issue is is that a, the mat cutter is a machine and cuts perfect right angles. When I put tape on the paper, I'm not a machine and I don't get it. Or when I cut the paper or something, it's not quite as... Uh, but do you know, like when you're doing your presentation, you show us the sketch, you show us the process. If you just yep. see a framed artwork, you don't see the process. If you let this little peekaboo, the way you framed it and matted it, allows oh, that art to be viewed and see the process, too. Yep. Um... I have done ones where there was a nice edge, yeah, okay. you know, where I, I didn't tape, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a kind of interesting edge. Then I think it's fun to show that. Yeah, I agree. That's that's. Uh, I, love it. I like to see that in other people's stuff, too. So now some of this is going to look glary to you. Um, that yellow is just really popping now. Uh, into my yellow, I'm mixing that, what I was just using, and then you can see I got an olive. Mm -hmm. Lovely, interesting olive there. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna use that for the, some of the shadow areas on the yellow, mm -hmm. which is the thing that they always tell you not to do in impressionist painters. Is don't mix black for your shadows. <laughs> but it, it does, does do some nice things there. said good design is breaking some of the rules. Sure. Um, if it looks good, mm -hmm. it's that's all you needed it to do. If it looks right, it is right. Uh, th this, is, this is the one area in life where we get to freely do the means, the ends justify the means. Mm. You know, th everywhere else, it's, you're going to run into an ethical issue. <laughs> so... So here I'm just a damp brush I'm plowing into that and loosening up some of the yellow and getting a subsequent color. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a mailbox. I like that little things like that. I might put a sign on something. Let's cast a shadow off it a little further. That's a small thing. I shouldn't be in that, really. Let's get into uh, uh, something more important like that. So we're going to be right into our white or near white. And that you're going to be wanting to use fairly dense. So, da, 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 da. so cool. <laughs>
Now this is an area where if you had a square square brush, uh, oh, yeah. chisel tip brush, be great. Now these get shorter, yeah. Watch as they go back, they get shorter. So you do all your mat cutting right here. No. Uh, this this is the art association. This is not my studio. <laughs> You're not going to take credit. <laughs> no. Um, it's a wonderful place. This is the. Uh, At the art exhibit, was your art up there too? Yeah, I've, I've got there one. There's all of that in the back room, in the back. It, there's an exhibit, uh, which is our membership show, which is at the other end of the... Uh, yeah, I think oh, I, sh I, I should... I this should, building. Yeah. Ah, right okay. over there. Okay. Although, no, he has some other artwork at the Icon. Yeah, they they were over to see that. We went over That's there. We're going back. Awesome. But the thing awesome. is, I didn't recognize his art, and we know his art. Why didn't I see his art? Oh, you, you, missed, you didn't you recognize didn't it. I didn't recognize Maybe it because it was downstairs. bigger? Was it oh, well, it might have been bigger and it might have been different than it was what different you... Than what he does here. Oh, yes. Yeah. I didn't recognize there, it. There were two great big huge oils. Okay. Upstairs. Oh. As you walked in, those were oh. two of his. And then oh. all in that room right there, I think, was his. Yeah. Oh. The, back, the back end is mine, yeah. the watercolors. And then in the middle is uh, Bill Teeple's work. And we ran out of time. Those oh, we, you, you, it's hard to see Those everything. were 24 by 36. Those were big pieces, correct? Oh, the big oils, yeah, those were... Uh, those were big. big. That's what I'm saying. Because the smalls, and then they were going to the bigs like that. Holy mackerel. Tell me about the artist. Well, thank you. Extraordinaire. Well, the largest I've done is six by... Uh, hey, Cousin Dennis. <laughs> This is the guy that took the photo. So Dennis, I was telling them, I was telling them that you probably don't remember all these goofy little bird houses and things like that and wires and stuff like that. Probably what you remembered was the uh, smell of the, the, the water and the air and uh, just the bright sunshine and that sort of thing. So th th thank you for providing so many great uh, subjects uh, from your trip. Boy, I'll tell you. So. How did you get those books in there so fast? They're just, just <laughs> whoop, whoop them in with a white. I mean, it's so much easier to do this than to leave a space. Paint around them or something, you know. Yeah. And we'll, we'll do a little more with them. Uh, let's put a. Uh, let's put a. So is everyone in Fairfield an artist? <laughs> uh, I'd say about 20% of the people who live here, yeah. Community. Yeah, really. That part's oh, true. It's, yeah. it's kind of more of an international community, too. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I need to get down here more. My, my cousin owns a gas station here, Globe Lies. Mm -hmm. Well, I have come from a really small town further South. <laughs> east, yeah. east for east. the east, yeah. I, I think I'm what still town? south, too. <laughs> what town? New London. Oh, okay. There is nothing that looks like London. Just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and new. Well, it's new. It, it does, not new. It doesn't look very new. Really. <laughs> With Iowa, I'm from West Bend, Iowa. Our high school is the size as this art community center here. Why do you think? Oh my. In the middle of downtown. This it. arts community center is big. It's beautiful. Here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I do that all the time. I, and I love Fairfield, but I don't live here. It's so like really they have nice. a first Friday of the month. Uh, so a little bit of yeah. turquoise. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. No, that's, uh, no it's so not. <laughs> Uh, just, I'm, I'm adding smaller marks. As you can see, uh, the, the way I'm working is, is larger to smaller. I've been waiting to put in 
this main pole because I'm there's also a railing that goes with it. I don't know if I want that or what. I think I'll put in the writing on the. Uh, uh, now, when you're just quickly trying to paint writing. <laughs> yeah, you see, he remembers the salt air. That was a. Yeah. Okay, Monterey. One, two, three, Mon. Let's see, what's the middle letter? Mont. M O N R E. So T E is T E is the center. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm not going to try to go for the, the particular script. I think it's just enough to... If you wanted to do the script so, you wouldn't work this scale. You'd work much, much bigger. If, if you really wanted to get the script mm -hmm. and that, that sort of thing and get it just so, yeah. then you work at the appropriate size scale. One of the things I see oh. uh, mm -hmm. second career artists doing a lot um, is they think, okay, I'm, I'm learning, I'm practicing, so they work. Yeah. You know, and they work too little. And then the smaller something is, the harder it is to do mm -hmm. and get it right. If you're off by one mm -hmm. one hundred and twenty eighth of an inch, mm -hmm. it shows. But if you're working bigger, mm -hmm. you know, and you're off by a quarter inch, you don't even see it. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, work, you know, comfortably, <laughs> comfortably. <laughs> You, I say second career artist because if you, you're an artist, you wouldn't be painting if you weren't, or trying to paint uh -huh. if you weren't. And and it's I I'm convinced that deep down inside, that was what we were intended to be: singers, musicians, <laughs> painters, dancers, you know, stuff like that. You know, sorry, Dwight, uh, law. <laughs> Accounting, oh, all that stuff. That? So, he was, he was saying he, Scott, you tell him. Well, it's it's just that I feel like that there's a deep down inside art is what we really. It's funny you say are that. Are built for or want to do, mm -hmm. which I don't think we'd be out appreciating it if we didn't have some affinity for it. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, all the, you know, being policemen and soldiers and, and every other I thing. Turn her phone off. Oh, is it a phone? phone? I think oh, is that yeah. her phone? Oh, okay. I thought it was a clock. No. Really? Was, um, she must be out of the room. Okay. That's funny. She's out of the room, but you, you so said I'm, we were meant to be artists and sinners and dancers and... Uh, <laughs> Singers, you say. I thought it said sinners. 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 That's what I thought she said. Well, that, that comes sinners. built in, right? So, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's the easy part. Settle <laughs> down, young lady. But, he said sinners. But, well, okay, but because we're sinners, yes. we have to be accountants, soldiers, policemen, firemen. You know, ah! <laughs> good one. And all that other stuff. Yeah. So, no. oh, gee, I, I better shut up here. I can... <laughs> Still been in the garden eating apples all day. Yeah. <laughs> so you say we just we need to just go with the flow and do more of what we're creating. Yeah. yeah. You know, my parents told me I had to do interior design. <laughs> you can't be an artist to be a starving artist. Yeah. Yeah. Just... <laughs> and now that they're past, I do art work. I'm like, what? And I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm basically as I'm going along, I'm just kind of mixing a lot of the colors that I had previously used into one another. Uh, there's some little things like this. You want to be careful where you put them and particularly how you space them. Mm -hmm. Don't do the disco beat. You know, yeah. uh, wow. Lights over darks. Uh, 
So yeah, it's kind of like an oil painting in a sense. Yeah. Um, but it gives you a little more leeway than a straight up watercolor. Now I could go back and study this and say, all right, now if I wanted to do this in watercolor, I'd have to look at it a long time, make some decisions about um, what's staying in, what's coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the sequence that I'm gonna put the washes on, um, all that stuff that maybe by the time I arrived at all those decisions, the light would have changed. People would be standing there. I couldn't see it. You know, it's just mm -hmm. uh, more white. Okay. Oh, when you're white, when you put a glob of white out here like this. Hi, Carol. Is it me or is the corner off on front? Oh, yeah, it does kind of come down. I need to come down there with the dark. Good eye, Carol. But I was kind of thinking that might be, oh, I see. The shadows tell that. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that it's just that rustic, you know, the place or the cabin. So, I do like those little yeah. Um, yeah. shadows from the... Mm -hmm. Fans but that's the neatest part about art. We get to do what we want to do. And leave yep. out what we want to leave out. Right. I mean, not everything is, is, is you know, like that's the squinting. Mm -hmm. Um, I never knew that you closed one eye when you squint. That's a new one for me today. I, I was always doing thought it, it was like yeah. this, yeah. you know, with both eyes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and to continue with that, if you defocus, mm -hmm. you then see? that's good for seeing color relationships. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, both eyes are open, but you're defocusing them. Uh, or just flip your glasses down if you're... That's what I'm thinking, yeah. blind like me, yeah. You, you get all the values <laughs> right, and the art looks great, and then people say, well, what about this that you left out? You put your glasses on and go, oh, I didn't so, see that until now. Well, <laughs> you know, and, and there's that thing about leaving out. Yeah, there's some things. <laughs> what does it really need to be in there to say, uh, I'm putting this in the next trip, 9 a.m., mm -hmm. just because if I can put some blue against this rusty color and it makes a nice thing, and, and mm -hmm. it breaks the shape up. And it's, I'm just, I, at this point, I'm Mark Rothko. Now, you knew that before you even, you knew that when you put that brown color on there, right? You had that intention way back. Uh, yeah, uh, that's one of those decisions that kind of happen very quickly as you're... Because I would have asked him, I was about to say, similar to um, Christine, so it where's... isn't quite the color that we see, the art of the photo being, but he had a reason for putting it in because he knew where he was going with it. Wait a minute. Where's the side of the building? That? No, the other side. The other side? Oh, I've chopped it off a bit. Ah. Uh... So, oh, you know what? Actually, it would look even better. Into the water. Let's come in a bit. There's a another building and some sort of. Uh, hmm. Oh, you are gonna look at you. Yeah. Hmm. See, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Now, watercolor that'd be now. Nah, you're finished there. Wow. <laughs> yeah. so. I am chopping a fair amount off. I'm coming to about there, so I might put in. Let's see. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and a space fourteen, so seven would be five, six, A. Mm -hmm. So you did call calligraphy? <laughs> uh, well, I don't, you know. You know, if that was written on there and signage at the water like that, it might have been done by hand. Just because it's not in a city where it would be mass. Mm -hmm. Oh, that that looks old enough painted, to have been, yeah. Painted by hand. Back in the day, yeah. Mm -hmm. We like back in the day. Okay, so that's, you know. Okay. That's cool. Let's put a little bit of a... 
Oh. Are there any birds on any of those poles? That looks like one there. Oh, wow, that is. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to stick them up in the air, but... Um, so cool. Uh, like, you know, something like this. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my favorite UK painters, Ray Balkwell, he just does lovely things like this. Ah, it's, oh, Greg was just wondering when, when you guys are coming up. I'm about done. So let me just put oh, one in. we're going back over to the studio? Yeah. They're checking on us, huh? So, I, yeah, I want to come over with you guys and cool. answer some Everybody questions. I wish. this video needs to, who watches you needs to come to Fairfield and check this whole beautiful place. Oh, a lot of them have. Jeff says he loves a chrome, or probably why I respond is more like oil and I can make my kind of mistakes. Yeah. Oh, it's... Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm seriously considering making this my opaque medium. Because it's just, I don't have to do get anything more than what I've got. Versus you know, oils. Um, you know, get all oh. your oils out and, the, and, and, you know, clean up afterwards. Oh. And, you know, oh. you know, I mean, all I've, all I've, literally all I've added to my watercolor is this. And maybe two more brushes. Using, using modeling paste and pasta. And doing these abstracts. It's prime like, in the prime in the cannons. I always wash my yeah. oil brushes. I'm like, I'm not doing this again. And I, mm -hmm. I switched to acrylic in order to use my modeling paste. And that, yeah. And you know how they say we so much them. quicker to, to clean up. Christine, you know they say we can put them in the freezer. And I've done that I, too. I'm but then I go back to my brushes. freezer months later and I've ruined yeah. 15 brushes. Now, you know how expensive that is? Yeah, yeah I do. However, you can stick your, your brushes. If you know you're going to work on something later, mm -hmm. a, a, a few, several hours later or the next day, you can actually stick your oil brushes in some oil. Like... Mm -hmm. Safflower or olive oil, yes. Yeah. And it will save the brushes from drying out. Like a peanut and, oil or any kind of oil, huh? A, a non-drying oil. Not peanut brittle, no. No. <laughs> No. You, we don't want any accidents with the dog, right? I'm hungry for a peanut thanks. That's what you said. Is there a candy store here? Okay, so I've pretty much done everything I'm going to do to it until like maybe later I would fiddle with it. What and are you going to do on the left, left side, right above that railing? Because in a way that doesn't make sense to me because... Right here? That, uh, the line going down where you've got the orange, yeah, going down there's a, a spot, yeah, the the gray area. No, the well, building right, should be right there. there. Okay, uh -huh. that that building is there unless yeah. you're going to put some bodies or something there. There's a you a can put me there. Be I'm gonna. I'm, there's a railing that goes along here that I actually kind of like. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it dark across the light areas and light across the dark areas. Okay. So uh, let's that do. Would work. Yeah. Let's do. Now since the longer section would be. <laughs> you know that is C. Logley's studio. When I did her portrait at her studio, she came over and continued that. Look at that end. one line. What a difference that would made, huh? Told me what I needed. And just like yeah. very very pale blue, pale grayish blue. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Just to get a little more Better. activation out of that, I may just put some. Uh, you call this painting by committee? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh no! Uh, this is uh, uh, like uh, your uh, normal uh, painting. Sorry, yeah. artists, eleven artists what in the room. What would you do? Do you feel like you're working with children? John. Well, it, it 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 is it is helpful to have. A second set of eyes well, come in artists. sometimes. I think I'd be nervous. And uh, I would have kicked you all out by now. Are you going to put a dark shadow on the other side of that pipe? We, we call the, this we're really disruptive, John. On the other so, side of... The pipe, like, that you just put in the, the white to get the, the shadow on the right side of that white pipe that you... Oh, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, with this stuff here, that olive... So, 
I love the color yes. of the building. That's what really does it for me. It mm-hmm. does. Blue and yellow, bang. You know, yeah, yeah, just. Mm-hmm. It looks like so, yes. two buildings. Now, I do want to, one, the very last thing I'm going to do here is. Uh, Reflections in the water, don't you, John? Well, yeah, I'm going to try and... and, Well, that's the brown paper showing through. Yeah, I love that. And Mm -hmm. again, like I was saying, uh, if you've got a subject with a lot of cool colors in it, Mm -hmm. the the brown paper is nice. I have not used a cool color paper with a warm painting over it yet. But I'm, you know, I'm fixing to try it, so... So Would you use hot... Is it hot press watercolor paper or just the 90 pound that you... Here. Um, if you're wanting to tin a watercolor paper to use this on, yeah. then yeah, shoot, um, 140 maybe would. The interesting thing about this uh, printmaking mm-hmm. paper, I don't know if it's because it's made to be soaked uh. before you you put the mm-hmm. plate and the press on it. Mm. Uh, it, you notice there is no buckling going on here, and this is only oh. 90 pounds. Wow. Yeah. So, you almost get a nicer luminosity on the white of the gouache than you would for just leaving white paper too. Yeah, it, well, we also get the physicality, we get some right. impasto right. there. So, what brand of watercolors do you use? Uh, mostly M. Graham. They re-wet nicely because they have a honey hue rather than glycerin. Honey do? Honey. Rather than glycerin to keep them... It's all, all watercolor is pigment and gum arabic, which if you did nothing else to it would be like those ink sticks that the Chinese use. You have to really work it up to get a... And then you'd only get a pale wash. Have you seen that new watercolor that has a synthetic vehicle? Core? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Here's me. Um, well, no, the thing is, it's, it's synthetic, so it has to be made in a plant, in a yeah. factory, yeah. you know? Whereas the gum arabic is like, it looks like brown rock candy yeah. exuded yeah. from a thorny tree. Yeah. And it's in, uh, Cordovan is the best stuff. It, it's like the Darfur area. And women get employment from picking this stuff off those thorny trees. Yeah. And uh, which, what else would they be doing if they weren't? John Deere can't make a machine that will go through that tree and get no. this stuff out. So <laughs> it's, it's not going to happen. So <laughs> that, that, that core watercolor is more opaque. Huh. Because, you see, it holds about three times the amount of pigment load oh. that gum arabic can hold. Right. And so you can paint opaque yeah. with that stuff and not oh. add gouache to it. So. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I have kind of like maybe some people would consider them silly considerations. Yeah. But I, uh, in America, we have, we have several good choices of paint yeah. Oh, yeah. manufacturers. So it's not, there's not a big carbon footprint of it being shipped. Yeah. Um, paper, I'm sorry to say you have to get something from Europe. Yeah. The American papers are not that good. There is no reason on earth we couldn't be making great watercolor paper in America. We've got cotton. The cotton paper is made from a, the lint that comes off when it's ginned. Must not it's, be it's, money in it. Yeah, there's money in it because the, it, it's a pre-consumer waste product, but they're selling it. It's also used in the manufacture of gunpowder and explosives. Huh. So in America, that's where that's going. <laughs> In Egypt and India, it's going into paper. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, what are your that last part paper? Uh, Blick has it. Is it in sheets or is it? Yeah. In- well, you can get, you can also get it in tablets. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if the craft comes in a tablet. And that, yeah, the it, color you're talking about? Oh, it does. It doesn't. does because Cindy, Cindy has it. it. Yeah, yeah, Cindy has it. Yeah. Yeah. The, what, what's the it's size person. brush again, John? John Preston. Size brush? Oh, I'm so using a variety. Sure. Oh, variety. Um, okay. Uh, something. The biggest one I used was this, which is a squirrel hair mop or a fake squirrel mop. This is a oil painting brush I saw the handle off of. It's just nylon. This is a Oriental brush. Cindy's. We'll have to different one. Okay. 
So I didn't use my oriental brush today, but you do need the slightly stiffer hair brushes. So. Yeah, I remember you saying stiffer, yeah. So let's see what we get. I mean, I could still play with this, but we want to go over and see the... Borrow some John, this was or actually, sure. have it won't be borrowed. How was it? How was it? Oh, well, thank you. Fabulous. You gave us fantastic so ideas. Amazing. Thank you so much. Wow. Is craft the color? Or is craft That's the color because it looks like brown craft paper. Yeah. So, and stone hinges. Oh, uh, it was 22 by 30, and I cut. This didn't show as well on there uh -huh. as it does here. This is really yeah. strong. So, <gasps> sure. But you can see that. I mean, I could. It's a gram as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. But look at that. No buckling. How long did that take you to do this, John Preston? What time is it? About an hour. Two fifty. Started at one. Yeah. And and, and a lot of interruptions from that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Interruptions, distractions. Look at this. It was like having a bunch of um, not children, but like um, <laughs> what do you call some kind of rodents or something that are just so no. running around. Wait a minute. <laughs> running around and bothering oh, yeah. and interrupting and. Thanks, oh Cuz. I, I would. I would. Oh, thank say you, Pat. We're kittens or oh, our puppies. Barking or, dogs. So. Yeah. Well. So we we have got a robust, fun group here today, and I'm, I'm thank you for you that. guys for for tuning in. Gosh, um, you for show your up with face us. sometimes. Well, yeah. one of these days when where I get the fancy it? set up where I can. Oh, is it in? Is it this? Well, you get. Why don't you I'd have to be taller. <laughs> You should just lean right down there and look back. So that I, have to, I like to think my paintings are better looking than Wait a minute. Is this on a swivel? Right Is this swivel? Well, Turn, go over there. I'm going to swivel it very slowly. There's John Preston, you guys. Yeah. yeah.